Hello viewers, my name is Oluwatomi Okeo from Flagit TV and I had the opportunity um, this week to meet a formidable person. I don't know where you're seeing, whether you're seeing him already but anyways, um, I am super excited to have on seat today, should we call you Professor, Doctor, Mr, <laughs> all the titles or just intellectual um, Kuli Lawa. So he is the executive director of Electoral College and I am super glad to have met you this week um, and I'm actually looking forward to this relationship, yeah. Um, I, I think um, the pleasure is more mine. Um, it gives me more chances to be on TV and um, <laughs> most, um, most of all, you know, just another chance to have a very great conversation. So I think pleasure is actually mine. And we're both wearing black. So we're <laughs> no, we color coded today. Maybe you stole from my idea. You know, you knew what I was going to wear, and then you decided to, you know, well, take that. Well, they say great minds think. <laughs> Awesome, but thank you for joining us once again. And um, today we have the opportunity to just talk about, you know, reflect on the elections. I'm sure you've done a lot of that. I'm sure you get calls, media houses every day, you know, to reflect on the um, general election. But for us, this this topic is quite important because we did a lot of campaign um, in terms of good governance and trying to encourage people to vote. So we did a lot of, we went to the streets, we did Vox Pops, you know, just asking people what they would like to see. And people were very optimistic, you know, uh, about this election, the, this past election. They were very optimistic about the, what they would see, the role of the beavers and everything. So I wanted to ask you, if you're going to describe your perception about the election, what would you say that was this well, past election? Well, for me, I think um, 2023 was an eye opener to Nigerians. Um, we've, 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 a lot of us have preached, you know, that it's about the process and not the product in an election. And Nigerians always decided to focus on the product. Like, and I'll give you a minor example. Uh, we always scream, there's this candidate, there's this candidate, where we have democracy. I've always opined that um, our democracy is poor because as long as we're not involved in the primaries, which is what happens, we're actually just having something that's already been selected, picking from what's already been selected from us, for us, and that's not exactly a democracy. But looking at 2023, the primaries, you know, the new innovations brought in, I'll say something. Um, People might undermine selections a lot, but I'll say something about it. This is one of the safest elections we've had in Nigeria. Mm. It might not, but it's not popular opinion. Nobody yes. wants to accept. Yes. Um, That's not the popular you know, feeling yes, out but there. I, I, you know, being part of, being someone that, that's part of the process, I tend to look at other key markers. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, the first time in Nigerian history we have five political parties as governors. That's the APC, PDP, Labour, um, APC, PDP, Labour, NNPP, yes. and APGA. Mm. That's beautiful. We have about nine political parties in the National Assembly. Exceptional, never been done. Our usual democracy is either you are in this party or the other. Or like the other. Party system, yes. There is no other way. Mm. So I look forward to how governance will be post 2023. Yes, were there issues with you know an exposition, um, the IREV, and then you know the amount of money spent on it about a hundred billion naira, and then you know as regards presidential election, the upload didn't come as as it was supposed to come, and they felt INEC had a responsibility for that. But you see... But they did have a responsibility yes, for that. Yes, they do. But I'm, I'm not saying, remember, I'm not saying this is perfect. For me, I, I was scared about the numbers. I, I, I had predicted that numbers for this election would be the worst in Nigeria's history. It was painful to find I was right. Very, very painful. Um, there was massive voter suppression, as always is, in I'll, Nigeria. I was just about to cut in and say, um, I think that was, people felt that was deliberate more deliberate this year than because it seemed there was a perception that more people were going to vote this year than ever. Um, so was it was not just a deliberate attempt to disenfranchise certain people. Um, I, I Many people didn't have the opportunity to vote. For example, even in my polling booth, for example, they start, we started at 11 um, and we had, they, they took numbers, right? So from, we had one to 2,000 
um, I was I got there at 7 30 a.m. and I was number 200 and you know something right and then we had up to almost 4,000 people take a tally and by the time the rain started I at six I I, I was able to um, do verification at 6 30 at 220 something out of 4,000 um, I think you can you, you can see the math so al already it means that by the time I'm leaving many people will definitely not get to vote on that day there's there's something I've clearly said and um, we need to start to view these things from a different parameter okay we've um, before 2022 we've advised the government on the need for year elections Everybody comes up with a smart answer. There's no network in the whole of Nigeria. It doesn't need to be in the whole of Nigeria. Um, after this election, my solution to most things was that Nigeria cannot handle an election in 36 states at once. If we staggered this election, six states, pick one state by region, and did six states every day and went across, not every week, mm -hmm. every day, follow each other, I think we'd have a more considered credible or more um, citizen-friendly elections. Would one state vote um, or influence the other? Or they will not, or you think that, okay, will, they will not, the, the result of that state will not be published by then? Or how do you intend for that to work? Of course, the results can be published. What we'll do is pick, if, we're, if I were to advise on such an issue, I'll pick one state per region. So. Um, I'll pick like South South, I'll pick Cross River, um, North East, I'll pick Borno. Those states are not connected and they, are, they can't influence themselves. Though there are other people that, you know, other states that are coming after that will say, okay, this people voted this way and they're mm. voting this way. They want. But why don't we just test the process? Let's be honest, let's look at the figures on ground. I wouldn't just say stagger the elections without looking at things. Nigeria was able to deploy 400,000 across security forces. 400,000 of which over 200,000 were guarding ballot papers, you know, sensitive materials, back and forth. Meaning that if you divided 400,000 by the total number of polling units, 176,000 polling units, mm -hmm. about 176,000, you're going to have about, give or take, 2.1 policemen in, or security forces in every polling unit. So if you so imagine your polling unit with two thousand people, and there's fracas, fight between tolls, and you just have two policemen. How's that going to go? There were videos on on, on the was, election bad. that people were fighting and policemen just walked past. Yes. What do you want them to do with two thousand trying to settle two thousand people? It's not an easy thing. We need to stagger elections. Whether when we come with the argument, states states my influence. Yes, let them influence. That's where we are. We are not yet that big. Our attempt to do that has always scuttled elections, caused a lot of fracas, disturbed the credibility of the elections. When let's go back to state elections, states down off off cycle off, with yes, Niger, Niger yes. you ha barely have any problems. Yes, there's yeah, a little a over managed. voting, yeah, mm. which shows we can't manage an election in 36 states. We're not there yet, and the worst elections and which always is a problem. So when, when you have um, a first set of elections, which is presidential and the National Assembly, you're dealing with just 469 seats plus two. So that is generally 471 seats. When it goes to gubernatorial, you're dealing with 36, uh, um, elect 36 um, state uh, governor elections. And for State House of Assembly, you're talking of about close to 8,000 wow. separate elections, constituencies. Come What are the areas of improvement for INEC and other stakeholders? So, like you said, um, you spoke about what the INEC should have done, and maybe if we stagger elections, for example, and how that would be beneficial for us. Um, and I agree. I just think that more people will be worried, more politicians will be worried about one state influencing the other right however let's forget those dynamics i think that you know we should all see ourselves as independent thinkers right meaning that some people have chosen you know from day one when they come up with their manifestos they have chosen who they wanted to vote with vote for regardless right so if we assumed like things you know things in your world would work out that way 
what else what are the other strategies that INEC and other stakeholders should have taken or should take um, given that we also have some off-season um, elections coming up what will be your um, your map your you know your thoughts in that regard so as regards the elections First and foremost, if you look at an election of a country that has over 200 million people, China, US, the elections are staggered. That doesn't tell you, that tells you something. Secondly, we trust our hard earned money with a little star, I don't want to call any bank, so hash, hash. But you cannot trust one vote with star. Is that not a little hypocritical? Hmm. Well, Nigeria, we don't believe Nigeria, we have trust issues. Yeah, we have trust yes, issues. I agree when it comes to yes. voting, but I don't think that's actually the answer. Mm -hmm. What we have trust issues with is that we know that if we move to e elections, ensuring that Nigerians in diaspora too can vote, I don't think anybody in power right now would be in power after one election cycle. Mm -hmm. And that is where the fear Do you think is. we trust technology? That's it. Don't we think, no, based on what happened with beavers, don't you think Nigerians no, think that? Don't, don't, don't look at this from an election point okay. of view. Okay, okay. You trust, you trust Ash, technology. Yes, star 77, seven, yes. You trust it with even getting a visa. Definitely. You, one vote. Well, because we have more vested interest in whether this vote counts or it doesn't count. Do you know why you do you know why you say that? So Nigeria has one of the best banking systems in the world. I agree. And not because Nigeria wanted to. I agree. The culture of the people do not allow that I transfer money to you. Let's say I take a one of these cabs now, one of these healing cabs, and I transfer money to you, and it takes three days before you say, ah. Nigeria, I can't walk. Could you walk? Could you walk? I agree. <laughs> Nigerians are too impatient. I bought something from you, I transferred, then it takes four days. It has, you get, to, it has, it has to happen now. now. It has, before you the leave. Nigerian culture. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. This before one, you leave. run. It's a Nigerian culture. So it's not like... So we had to create something that, that responds, responds to, to our yes, electoral yes. needs. Mm. I get what you are saying, and I'm liking where you're going. You're saying that we are peculiar people, so we won't necessarily have to do things the way every so it means that it's not one size fit all in terms of even technology we have to create a technology that works for, for the us. kind of people that we are so we have trust issues right so if we have trust issues then we have to create like, a technology that works yes. for people so, with so, distrust so are, right i enjoyed my time in koa party as national publicity secretary and in that time the only e-election ratified by INEC within intra party was done by us till date was an interesting thing and we know that nigerians have trust issues so you know what as you vote hmm. you would see the one tick within the state tick within wow. the world tick like you see the count going you up you see the yes. count going up everybody's seen it there's no altar as you vote you notice that one extra jump once you press enter if we're able to do that we might be able to satisfy the nigerian need to know because it's it's a very it's a very strong thing and, and we, you know, there are other parameters which we could employ into this. We could start, okay, you know what? Let's only try the local government chairman. And we've tried it with JAM. No, you know, there's some things that we thought could not, not actually work. could not work. But yes. now we've tried it with JAM, but mm. we've succeeded. Now it's history. Now, if you say, okay, let's not try a president first. Let's try it with uh, local, local government, government elections. Yes, yes. Ah, they're not big. They don't have anything to shout about. Besides, not many people vote. But people don't, many people don't know. Do you know that's what was so funny about this election? You realize, that I started asking questions, that apart from the presidential, right, many people did not know the name of any other person within. They just, if you chose one party, for example, for presidential, every other candidate was the same. Like, so you could almost tell that if this person, if this state goes this way, um, almost like the person who will win for every of the other um, categories will be from that party. Like we just, you know, you know, I, when I was running in 2019, I did exceptionally well for my age, and I don't like to say for my age, but let's use for my age. If Nigeria's really, but just to say that we're also very 
I'm, I'm always glad to see that we are taking the bulls by the horn and we are doing rather than just complaining because a lot of us sit down on the complaint stage and we're just complaining about everything that is going wrong and we don't take um, and it takes a lot of it takes boldness it takes sacrifice it takes all sorts of things to be out there so um, I'm, we're always glad to have people who have stood up and said you know we, we want to be there and we want to see the change happen so what, I, what I've understood about Nigeria is very simple. We have vested interests in only one position in elective office, mm. president. president. Mm. And to us, the president is the savior. He can turn water to wine. He can touch a white wall and it goes black. That's what we think of the Nigerian president. And that's what we're getting wrong, right? And, and totally. And you know, the strongest arm of government, and you never know, tell you a Nigerian president is the strongest president. That's not true. Mm. The strongest arm of government in Nigeria is the legislative, but they have to function as a collective. What we've never had in Nigeria's history is a functioning legislative. And I'll give you an example. Across the world, uh, someone like McCain, who served 20, 27 years in, in the Senate, he had over 9,000 bills passed. Passed, not proposed. Mm. Passed. In Nigeria, collectively, with senators earning about 42 million a month, which is the highest in the world, Nigerians collectively do not have a Senate that passes up to 184 bills in four years. Wow. If you compare this with the U.S., which actually settles about 4,000 to 6,000 bills per wow. year. Wow. And come on. But the U.S. has <laughs> laws. So I do, I'm even beginning to wonder, why they now making laws for cats and dogs? And dogs, yeah. Because they should have exhausted human laws by now. But they keep amending. Amending, keep, reviewing. Yeah, because life, Making better, because yes. things are changing. Yes. So I'll give you an example. Because of how we look at the country, I remember the NSARS incident. Everybody looked at it from an executive perspective. The president, the president has stopped the police. Police has to. Mm. You know, why would you have a problem like that? Let's start from the beginning. Um, police are under the Ministry of Interior. This is the only place in the world that is supposed to happen. Mm. Execution of justice solely rises, like rests in the hands of the judiciary. But if you give the police to the judiciary, the president can no more use the police to arrest the Supreme Court judges mm. when they feel like. When they want to, yes. She's total flagrant disobedience. Now, the judge who you want to be independent, or the attorney general, or the CJN, is appointed by the president. As long as that happens, we are not having an independent judiciary. Definitely. A body of benchers should recommend to the president and president signs. Signs, wow. those, those are the first basic things. We are coming to the problem. Mm. Now, let's go to chapter two of the Constitution, where you have rights, 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 rights. But it clearly states that all these rights are not justiciable. Now what that indirectly means is that if any time it the comes, and social yes, rights, yes. if it comes in tandem mm. with, with, and this is where it's headed, it comes in tandem with what the state wants, the state supersedes your, in, your internal rights. So if you want to correct the system, till we collect that clause that they are justiciable mm. in chapter two of the constitution, the police, the military, and everybody else who keep stepping on Nigerians. But let's go back to elections. I yes, just yes, no, that, that was that was very. You were actually talking about the local government and the strength of the local government. Like you wanted to use the local government as an example. You know, if we start with them. You, you know, one of the funniest questions I always ask everybody. I was in, I was in Lagos and we we're discussing, and you know, they were just saying they want the president to do this, they want the president to do this. I asked, I said, um, okay, we're in what LG is this? Etiosa. I said, yeah, so um, what's a, a FAC allocation for a TUSA? And everybody was looking at me. I said, yes, federal government sends their money every month. How much is it? And nobody could answer. And I said, okay, I'll tell you, 503 million a month. And people screamed, how is a TUSA looking like this? AMAC. AMAC is on 400 and something. I can't remember, 423 or I can't remember. AMAC is for something. Are we supposed to have problems with drainages? For something means approximately 6 billion per year. Apart from things everybody else is doing, estates and whatever, what is Amak doing? What's Amak doing? I'm asking that same question. So, and that Since is I'm just... Ten, I'm in and, rate. and, excuse me, <laughs> that is just... You, you, you are Let's not to, go there. Let's that is just what <laughs> federal government gives them for being a local government on the house. Mm. Like, their mm. kiddies' pocket money. Mm. What of how much they generate, which is the tenement rate you went to? Somewhere like Etiosa and Amak, which probably have an IGR internal generator revenue of about two billion a month. 
Where does it go? Where does it go? Yeah. And you see, those are the questions we need to start asking ourselves. Not every saying, President, 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 President. Do you think I might not be loved. we give credence to CSOs in this country? I might not be loved but by what, for what I'm about to say. But I'm going to be honest, brutally honest. So, and it's going to answer your question and what we're doing with the CSO. So, it's one thing to love a country. It's one thing to want change. It's another thing to know how to do it. And it's the final thing is to understand the process. What causes the issues between politics and CSOs? CSOs, most of the time, people that head them have no prior. But I've, I've sat down in meetings where very highly placed political CSOs were there. And somebody was going to war with me that political parties are registered at the CAC. I've been, a member, I've been a founding member of about three political parties. I know that it's not the CAC. And this person knows I'm a founding member, but still feels that it's CAC. I was ready to argue it. You see, so this kind of arguments, and then I've seen um, people that were strong within CSOs that actually help transfer um, political knowledge from one um, cluster to another decided to join politics and then when they bought a form they boldly wrote uh, I bought a form I'm now a candidate you understand they are now even cursing me here now this is what politicians see and say you know what CSOs are joking they don't really know what's going on and hence you know the little rift between the CSOs and politicians and besides thanks to some other CSOs you get rich or die trying CSOs a lot of politicians have found out some of them can be bought, can be bought. Oh. and it's caused quite a fracas. But it's massive fracas between genuine CSOs, genuine CSOs, and, and those ones those who are just what well, they call it stomach infrastructure. Yes, just the stomach they, infrastructure yeah. CSOs, mm. and you know it 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 kind of blinds the work. But you, I I must mention that the top the, if you, you I think ten ten or eleven top CSOs in Nigeria, the work they do is it's incredible. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, I would ask you one final question before we leave. Um, and maybe just trying it out there, just so that we hear from your wealth of, you know, you have looked back, you have looked forward, you have spoken about the, you know, the previous election and then the ones before that, 2019 and all. What is, if you were to give a manifesto for the Nigerian dream, what would you say are the key ingredients for that? I've always been a proponent of state of residence, a head of state of origin. While running for office, I fought, I pushed that, I tried to push that bill. Um, every Nigerian should feel at home everywhere and can run for office or do anything anywhere. I've also felt that, um, though in the constitution we're, we're a secular state, we've been a bi religious state, we've only funded Muslims and Christians. I, if I, I would love to be Buddhist and funded to India. That won't happen for Nigeria. I feel that we should take religion out of our system. We cannot be funding. So I find it funny that we are funding religion and um, we're not ready to, they bring, want to down, be bring down dollar for, for SMEs. Mm. So um, these are key. You, ha you, you have to be able to, to get the, to the Nigerian dream. One, you have to make you know, people feel at home being Nigerian. I have to be able to prefer to, as I say, I'm Nigerian Igbo. Not an Igbo, I'm Nigerian, Igbo mm. Nigerian. Mm. Mm. Nigerian mm. Igbo. Let Nigerian come first. But then we also have to create a system in which people can thrive. I have to know that if I pay my taxes here, it will protect me health wise and every other system. Governance has to work. And then I think. What I advise the most is that Nigerians should travel. And not travel, not travel outside. Now this is travel within the country. And here is why. If you've been to 36 states, mm. you'll find out how beautiful this country is. It is. You'll find a reason to fight for this country. Where's the place of women in all of this? Um, we keep, we, we are very hopeful that as you see the Nigerian dream, we start to see more involvement for women. What do you have to say about that? So I think we've gone about putting women in politics or in governance the wrong way. 
So what we've done is pick one particular woman. You don't care whether she's right or wrong. You just throw up and say one time. She's a woman. Well, oh, she's a woman. Adama case in context. Um, and then, you know, you just want a woman there. No, why don't we start slowly? Why don't we start to infill, in, build a sense of belonging between our women? Why don't we keep them rights within the office and home? Why don't we start to make them feel empowered and, you know, equitable to men? When we start to do that, then we start to teach them about it's okay to run for office. I think what stops, I'll be honest, nobody can win an election in Nigeria without women. Yet women are shortchanged when it comes to the political process. Definitely. I, I, you know, everybody keeps saying night meetings, this is that. That's true. But I'll also say, we could make it suitable for women. I think what defeats women in Africa is that they already believe the political realm is not for them. I'll be honest, yes, what are they scared of? Ah, they'll call you prostitutes, they'll call you this, they'll call you that. I mean, men in politics get the same abuse. Women toughen up. So I, I was speaking at a conference and, you know, it was to women. And, you know, they were, we're talking about power and I, I'm trying to cite an example with this. And, you know, they were seriously saying, you know, they want to be in power. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to see a female president. Everybody started shouting. I said, okay, how many of you are in political parties? Problem. You cannot want to eat dinner and not enter the house. It's not possible. But I think what they keep saying is... So it's, it's, it's more of if you make the house unconducive for women. And so you keep saying, oh, you know, this is, you keep saying this is an open space. There's no, you know, there's no men or women, you know, anybody can come in. Anybody can enter a political party, for example. But the crux of it is if you create a, a room, right, that is not conducive. So, for example, if you are in a room that is not conducive for a nursing mother, for example, it means that whether you have labeled that room, um, you know this is this room is for all you have excluded her right or if it's not conducive for someone a person with disability um it's not accessible it doesn't have reasonable accommodation whether or not you said this room is not you know this room is free for all you have still excluded certain people i think that's the case of women so it's not that so it's one case that we think definitely that we are not you know we are not included in this space but in reality it's because of the things that we are women see. Let me right? go, let me go back. Preceding colonial invasion, women were part of the political process. With this come this, this and I'm going to cite. I absolutely I'm love the example explain, you use because to, so, they were part of the political so, process in their in in places that you know. They were king. They were queens. Yes. Prime ministers. They would leave the, their marketplaces and still, still go move. and get involved. Yeah. Now I'll explain what happened. 19 uh, about women's riot 1923 spread and almost took out south 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 southeast to south south of nigeria in less than three days no email no no fax so how that happened was shocking to colonialists um the issue in ibadan with fumilai okuti 1925 or 26 mark for some constitution if i'm right in 1933 now subjected nigerians and allowed them vote or be voted allowed them vote or vote for people who had a particular amount of money mm. women became excluded so the same people that I invite, you see, I like to tell the story clear, and this might not be nice, mm. but we have to have these conversations. Till we get to the origins of how women were kicked out of the political process, we will not solve the, the issue of replacing them back into the system. Mm. We, this is something that, if you go back 200 years, wasn't existent in Nigeria. I absolutely agree. And that's, that's my position. But I've always been key to um, supporting um, female candidates. I, but I'll tell you something. God, for me, good governance has no gender, tribe, or religion. So I, I expect when you're running for office and you come say, it has to let be me help. Let me hear you have bills you're proposing if you're running. Because I demand that from the guys. I don't think I won't demand it from you. I absolutely agree. It's been an amazing time with Kule Lawa, the executive director of Electoral College. I'm looking forward to many such conversations with you. And also, please, if you have not done any of your training, please look forward to it. And please remember to always flag issues of corruption on the Flagit TV or, you know, using the Flagit app. Um, again, Oluwatomi, have a lovely day.